Praise the Lord and welcome to Enlightened Words Save Souls YouTube channel. Excuse my voice and I wish on my face, but unfortunately, I am under the weather. But nevertheless, I will still do the work for the kingdom of God. Amen. If you can please subscribe and hit top notification bell to get everything that will be coming out. That will be great because you will always be on top. But if you don't hit the notification bell, you will not be notified of what's new that's coming out. If you like it, hit the like button. But most of all, share. So that we can share it to our other brothers and sisters in Christ. So they will not lack knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about praying the right way. So that we will get definite answers from the Lord. This is a four part lesson that I have broken down. This is a lesson that you can repeat so that it can marinate in your spirit. You will be able to pray the right way. So with that being said, we are going to start with chapter one, the right perspective on prayer. And it reads, a lot of people wonder why their prayers are not being answered and things are not working right for them. Well, that's why prayer is such an important subject and we must know the right way to do it. The first thought that must be established in your mind in order for you to be able to pray effectively is this. God wants to hear and answer your prayers. If he had planned it any other way, he would never have required you to pray. That's why he said in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Consider the Lord Jesus. He always received answers to his prayers. He never once prayed in vain. When we pray, we should not accept to have any less than Jesus. That's because he's given us the authority to use his name. When we speak in his name, it's an authoritative and effective as Jesus himself speaking to the Father. Sadly though, too many Christians don't know this because they don't spend enough time to study the word. So they don't enjoy a personal relationship with God. We need to know God as our father and our friend. One who's not far away and can be trusted. If God is a stranger to you, then you can't trust him. That's the reason for doubt. But when you know him, you will have faith in him. And when you have faith in him, you'll trust him. God is more willing to give to you than you're willing to receive. And Luke chapter 5 verse 12 says, And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Notice this man didn't question the power of God. He knew God had the power to heal him. As the leper, he had heard about Jesus, the healer. So he wasn't questioning his power to heal him of his leprosy. His only problem was he didn't know if Jesus would be willing to. In other words, he knew Jesus could, but didn't know if he would. There are a lot of people like this. They know God can, but they're not sure he wants to. They don't know his will. They are the ones who say, well, I don't know if God want, will is to heal me. So they run to the doctor for help. If it's not God's will to heal you and you go to the doctor to get healed, you'll be committing a sin by trying to get something that's not God's will for you to have. A lot of times when it comes to spiritual things, we are quick to say we don't know God's will while at the same time we demonstrate a desire for good things. And Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 
That desire for good things is a reflection of God's desire in us. There's no father who wants his children to go through the same problems he went through. If you're a good parent, you won't plan for your children to have the kind of trouble you had. You work hard so they won't have to suffer. You couldn't be better than God and take care of your family. If you're more willing to do good things for your family than he, then he's not qualified to be who we call him. But if God is God and he is who his word says he is, then he's better than the best daddy on earth. God is more willing to provide for you than you could ever be willing to receive provision. He desires to bless you and give you good things more than you're ready to receive them. That's why Jesus said you don't need to make vain repetitions when you pray. It doesn't matter what your need is, you must get this idea and let it affect your prayer life. That leprous man knew Jesus was the healer and that he could heal him, but he wasn't sure if he wanted to. This is the same reason many don't receive miracles in their lives today. They are not certain that God is willing to do something for them. It's the same reason some even believe God put a sickness on them to make them humble and keep them from some other problems. God doesn't need the devil's equipment to train his children. Why would he use Satan's tools as instruments of righteousness after he told us he's a murderer and the father of lies? If God could put sickness on you to humble you and you took drugs to take away God's instrument for your required humility, that invariably means you and Satan are in the same camp lying against God. But we're the generation that's not questioning the will of God for we've come to accept God as our father. That leper said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. No one had been willing to touch him because of his terrible disease. But Jesus touched him to show him how willing he was to heal him. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse 13, And he, Jesus, put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. That statement, I will be thou clean, settle for all time and in all generations as any questions or doubts about God's willingness to heal. Some people don't bother praying because even when they do, they don't accept answers. If you don't have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that is, you're not born again, you shouldn't expect answers because he wouldn't even hear you. However, if you are God's child, you have a right to expect answers when you pray, but to have those answers consistently, you must pray according to God's word, revealed concerning prayer in the New Testament. God invites us to pray. He's not troubled with our prayers. Some people think they shouldn't bother God with their prayers because he already has a lot of problems to solve. They figured that with so many people calling on God, that the same, at the same time, he might just get confused. And so in order not to compound his problems, they decided not to pray to him. Don't think like that. And if you don't, that's good. God, he is not confused by our prayers. Don't wonder how he hears when so many people pray to him at the same time. Remember, he is God. Nothing is impossible with him. When you pray, God listens because you're his child and you pray according to his will. Whistle listening to you, he doesn't consider your prayer with respect to another person's. He doesn't hold something back from you just because another person has asked for the same thing you asked for. He relates with you on a personal level. God doesn't prefer one of his kids above another. He relates with you as though you're the only one in the whole wide world. Did it ever occur to you that if you were the only person in the world, 
Jesus would still have come to die for you. That should let you know just how personal God is with you. He said, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And that's in John chapter 16 verse 24. This is God's word to you. If you ask him, you shall receive. People get a lot of encouragement to pray, but a lot of times they don't know how to. It's one thing to tell someone to pray and to pray hard, but it's another thing to let them know how to pray in such a way they can have the desired results and make the necessary impact. Through prayers, we can prevail on circumstances. God has shown us in his word that we can change anything, including things that were divinely destined to be. This may sound incredible to you, but it's in the Bible. God may have said, you're going to have it one way, but if you discover you don't want it that way, you can change it. It's amazing, but it's true. The only reason something can happen to you as God said it would are when number one, do you want it to happen? Number two, you don't know what's going to happen. Number three, you know what's going to happen, but you don't know what to do to change it. Number four, you don't do what you should do even though you know what's going to happen. God doesn't run our lives the way we think he does. Whenever he wants to do something, nobody can change. Nobody gets to know about it until it's done. Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29, The things that are revealed belongs to us and to our children, but the things that are not revealed belongs to God. So when he doesn't want any human influence on it, and when there can be no human influence on it, he doesn't reveal it. But if he reveals it to you, he is telling you, if you want to change it, you can. And you can only change it when you pray, and pray the right way. There are several accounts in the scriptures of men who changed the mind of God from what he had determined to do. One of such accounts is in Exodus 32, verse 7 through 14, where we read of how Moses stood between God and the children of Israel. God had determined to destroy them for their rebellion and stubbornness and raise a new generation for Moses. But Moses prevailed on God and prevented him from doing as he had purpose. We see another instance in 2 Kings chapter 20, where one man changed the course of an event that had been divinely ordered of God. King Hezekiah had been sick to the point of death. And one day, the prophet Isaiah walked into his room and declared, Thus say the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You can find that in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. This was undoubtedly the word and mind of God concerning Hezekiah's situation. He was doomed to die by none other than God himself. And there seemed to be no way out. But in the next verse, we read that he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. That's in the next following verse. King Hezekiah pleaded this case with God and the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 20 through 4 through 7. And it came to pass. A four Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus say the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard that prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day that shall go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thee days of Fifteen years, and I will deliver the end. This uh, I will deliver this city out of the hand of King of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, "Take a lump of figs," and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Right here, we talking about 
changing hopeless situations. Now this is the end of the first lesson of respective on prayer. The next chapter for the next time, the topic is understanding prayer in the New Testament. So before I go, I would like to extend an invitation out to those that have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You must believe and have faith of what you're praying and asking for. And faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if you heard the word and you believe and have faith, please repeat this prayer after me. Say, O oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe he died on the cross to save my soul. I believe God raised him from the dead and he is alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. I receive by faith eternal life into my heart from this day. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I believe I have eternal life now. I am born again. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer behind me, believe me, God heard you. He answered you and you are saved. Remember, not by feeling, but by faith. In Jesus' name. And welcome, welcome, welcome into the kingdom of God. Now you will be able to have a true relationship with God. So when you pray unto him, he can hear you. Until next time, have a blessed and wonderful day.